Tear gas is one of the most common less lethal weapons in the world. It is widely regarded as safe as a weapon that causes temporary pain and incapacitation but not actual harm. The truth is more complicated. The most widely used active ingredient in tear gas is CS, a chemical irritant that affects the eyes, lungs, skin and mucous membranes. But in actual use, tear gas is more than just a single chemical. Here, we take a look at a typical tear gas canister, the 37mm model 3231, made by Combined Systems Incorporated of Pennsylvania. Like a bullet or a shotgun shell, the 3231 cartridge contains a primer, propellant, and a projectile body which contains the CS mixture. When the trigger is pulled, the firing pin strikes and compresses the primer, causing the primer to ignite. The primer in turn ignites the propellant, creating a high pressure volume of propellant gas which begins to push the projectile down the barrel. In the model 3231, the propellant gas also expands into the projectile itself where it interacts with the CS mixture and begins a combustion reaction to produce CS smoke. When the projectile leaves the barrel, it is moving fast. Muzzle velocities vary between canisters and launcher systems, but 75 to 150 meters per second is typical. A projectile with a mass of approximately 100 grams traveling at 70 meters per second has enough kinetic energy to cause serious injury or death in the case of a direct hit. This risk is one reason tear gas canisters are never supposed to be fired directly at people. Shorter, flatter trajectories significantly increase the danger of a fatal strike. However, officers in the field ignore this danger all too often. In this video from Caracas, an officer can be seen firing a Venezuelan KVM-324 canister directly at a protester at a low angle of fire. The projectile's entire trajectory is caught on camera. Here, the projectile causes visible damage to the protester's wooden shield. Had the protester been struck directly in the head or chest, serious injury or death would likely have been the result. Even ignoring the risk of a direct hit, the dangers of tear gas itself are often understated. In sufficient concentration, tear gas can create a breathing hazard rather than just a temporary irritation. For example, officers often fire multiple canisters towards the same target in quick succession or even simultaneously. In this video from Hong Kong, we counted at least six different weapons being fired in the span of five seconds. We then counted at least 15 projectiles visible on the ground emitting smoke. Satellite imagery of this location in Hong Kong shows that these projectiles were all within a 10 meter radius. From the footage, it is clear that the smoke plumes from the projectiles overlapped significantly, resulting in a large area of concentrated CS smoke. Protesters attempting to disperse from the area may well have been exposed to higher than typical concentrations of CS for longer than typical durations as a result of this excessive deployment. In addition to excessive deployment by officers, environmental factors such as terrain and features of the built environment can also make use of tear gas more dangerous. This video from Philadelphia shows police firing tear gas into a crowd of protesters on an urban freeway embankment. As canisters land in the middle of the crowd, the protesters have nowhere to go. The steep embankment surrounded by high fencing restricts the crowd's ability to disperse, significantly increasing the risk of more serious and long-lasting health effects from prolonged exposure. Cases like these continue to become more common and widespread as tear gas becomes a standard police response to civil disturbance worldwide. The quantity and variety of tear gas weapons available to police continues to grow every year with little to no real oversight or acknowledgement of its potential to cause severe pain, suffering or even death. Amnesty International have documented many cases of severe pain or suffering caused by tear gas use 
as well as instances in which its use is clearly punitive. Our conclusion is that in such instances, the use of tear gas constitutes torture or other ill treatment under international law.